My name is Tim Flack. I'm um, associated with my work with animals. I work here in Shoreditch, London. Uh, it's where my studio is based. But uh, naturally enough, I have to often find my subjects um, elsewhere. Uh, I have, have been known to bring the old kangaroo and wolf into my studio, but generally we'll take the studio to the animal. At the moment, I have a show at my London gallery, Osborne Samuel, which will run to the third week of January. Um, that work will go on in different forms, some to the museum, Honeyman Museum in, in South London, others to uh, the Primate Centre Tricross, where it will make part of a big public exhibition. My, my interest in animal photography actually is, is rooted in the very first role of film I ever took, which was uh, doing a foundation course but do, before I did my degree. They, they gave us a project to do at London Zoo, and I had my very first role, I must have been about 18 at the time, having never taken a picture with my own camera. And uh, so it, it was the very first pictures that I ever took with any thought and consideration. When I'd been working for at least 10 years, a project emerged where the um, art director had brought in a python and the handler who brought the python to the studio happened to own big cats and I thought it would be great to bring a big cat into a studio. So that was the start of that. I also um, had just signed a contract with Getty Images at the time which allowed me to find some means of paying for such an animal in the studio which was expensive for me at the time and to make it sustainable. From there I started to sort of evolve more just from a commercial position. But as the years have gone on, I've recognised that there's a way of looking at certain debates around us and animals. How, in a way, we shape nature and it shapes us. One of the images I think is most interesting for me from the Modern Human Project is the, the cockerel that looks almost like it's going across a stage on a, on a balletic point. Um, the origination of that project came that we were looking for natural, uh, I think it was genetic mutations and things like that. And my assistant was on the website and found this shot of a, of a featherless chicken. Um, just a casual shot taken in, in, at the agricultural college or university where we went in Israel. But having located it, I thought that's an incredible, it, it immediately struck me. And I organised, I didn't go with my assistant, but I organised to, to, I communicated with the professor and he was a bit dubious about what we were doing. And um, I managed to get access and I shot uh, three in the series. And the one that's in the show is, is, is one that's been, uh, is a natural mutant. So I didn't pluck the chicken and, um, and it's, it's been crossbred to create it into a fatter, fatter chicken for uh, the purpose of, of battery hens in the third world where they have expensive cooling systems is to, to help, help uh, supply livestock to that part of the world. What I think is more interesting about the cockerel, firstly that you debate what you're looking at. Is it real? Have I plucked the chicken? But, but I think also that if you think about it, today we consume more images of, of animals than we ever have but we're actually further apart from the actuality of animals than we've ever been. So if you go to your Sainsbury's or your Tesco's, you see your chicken with no feathers on, but of course in, 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 in clean film, but of course it doesn't look back at you. And it's these kind of layers of debate which I think are interesting, and which in a way when a picture forces an engagement because you question what it is you're looking at.